I'm giving you five video secrets that will help you level up your Instagram Reels strategy so you can stand out in your industry. If you saw the last video on the five phases of video creation, this is us honing in on video creation phase three and four. If you have not watched this video, go back and watch it, then come back here, and then we can get into the nitty gritty of video creation phases three and four. Because when you do this, it is going to help you not only stand out, but really be true to who you are, what you stand for, and what makes you so different. And the best part about all of this is, like most people, if you find that you overthink what you look like, where you live, the background of your videos, what you're talking about in your videos, how you talk about what you talk about in your videos, that's what we're covering today. I'm going to show you how you can really use what you already have around you and hone in on your personality so that you can brand yourself with your videos. And this, this, is the secret sauce to never running out of video content ideas. You see, this last video that I did about all the easy reels ideas, that was me giving you fish. Today, I am teaching you how to fish so that you never have to run out of fish AKA Reels ideas again. And whatever you do, don't miss out on the fifth video secret because it is the one that beats them all. It is truly why I do what I do. Video secret number one, use what you already have. When I first started creating videos on TikTok, I was so concerned what people would think about me because of where I lived, because I live out in the middle of beans this year. Last year it was corn. And what did I do? Eventually I decided I'm going to go all in on that. I'm going to use what I already have. And I started shooting TikToks in the corn. And you better believe I look different than other people. You don't have to be ridiculous with your videos, but if you've got a cornfield, use the cornfield. People want to see the real you. They connect with real people. You don't need a fancy house. My house was built in the 70s, not fancy, but it's a house and it makes me relatable because I have a kitchen and I have a bathroom and I have a bedroom and, and I have a living room like most people. And so I just use those as my backdrops, which brings me to video secret number two. Video secret number two is your backdrop. You want to be intentional with the background that you're using in every video. It doesn't have to be directly related to the video, but it needs to be a nice setting that makes you relatable. A lot of people like to put together these sterile, commercial, professional backdrops, and it gets old and monotonous, and you want to vary it up, and you want people to even though you're not talking about yourself, you want them to say, oh, she has a such and such like me, or oh, we have the same design taste, or oh, it's a new shot, it's a new scene I've never seen before. That grabs their attention. That's what you call a pattern interrupt. When we interrupt the patterns of what we normally show, it gets people more engaged and they're more likely to watch us, plus they feel like they know us a little bit more. It's not always just about changing up your backdrop or having to go outside or inside or into a different room. Let me take you into my laundry room, which you've seen a dozen times, and show you how I'm able to use all the different parts of that backdrop, and I'm strategic with what's behind me when I'm talking to the camera. I intentionally chose to use my laundry office and my laundry room and make it part of my brand. It helps me stand out. I'm using what I already have. It also makes me relatable. But your video background just doesn't help you with being relatable. It also helps you with being credible, being an authority in your industry. Let me show you what I have over here. In almost all of my YouTube videos and in the majority of my reels, you will find a ring light and or a microphone behind me. It's these little props, these little pieces of equipment that help establish who I am and what I do. They help me build credibility, authority. But what you won't see, clutter. You don't wanna have clutter in your background, anything that's going to distract or make you look disorganized. So laundry or piles of trash behind me, that would take away from my credibility. You don't have to have a perfect and pristine background. It needs to be interesting, it needs to be clean, and in some cases it needs to be related to what it is you do, but not in all your shots. Which brings me to video secret number three, 
planning your shots before you go to create your video. It's just as important, if not more important, than knowing what you're going to say. When I talked about the five phases of video creation, in phase three, you have to really hone in on how you can grab your audience's attention and then keep them engaged so that they'll watch the video until the end. If you don't know your visuals, if you don't have a visual strategy for that, your watch time is going to tank. I recently did a poll on Instagram and found that the majority of people don't even think about what they're going to show before they create a reel. In fact, some go as far as to script and memorize what they're going to say, but don't think of the visuals. Drop a comment below and tell me, do you plan your visuals before you create your reels? And it doesn't have to be that complicated. It doesn't mean you have to go and get tons of different video and pictures, although that would help to edit that over what you're already saying but you also could just change up the framing of your shot. You could have a wide shot, a medium shot, and then a close-up shot. Or you could do what I just did now. And it looked like I had two cameras, but really what I was doing in the middle is I stopped shooting, I moved the camera over here, and then when I started my video, I just turned my head so that it looked like I had two cameras. Visually, it's switching things up. It goes back to when I was talking about a pattern interrupt. Just changing the framing of the shot or the angle of your shot will keep your viewer's attention longer. Video secret number four. Start using real life scenarios and struggles to come up with your video content. A common mistake people make is they just do tips. And while tips are great because that helps us build authority, it doesn't help you stand out and it doesn't make you relatable. And if people don't relate late to you, then they are less likely to keep coming back to your account and wanting more content from you. The other nice thing about doing this is on the days when you can't figure out what you're going to post in a reel, the real life scenarios and struggles are always at your fingertips. I'm going to be doing one of these today. I'm dealing with a holiday weekend coming up with company coming, a child who's home from school because it's summertime, and I'm trying to figure out how to be consistent with my reels and my YouTube videos. So I'm going to turn that real life struggle into a teachable moment in a reel tonight. It will relate to my ideal person, but it also will give them value and tips they can turn around and apply it to their lives, and I've solved a problem for them. Another example of this is, I once did a reel about how I was losing followers because I pivoted and it freaked me out. Because even though you're an expert, you still have struggles. I'm an expert, but I still have the thoughts and I still struggle with the perfectionism. And so I have to catch myself in those situations and talk myself out of freaking out. And so I will turn those real life struggles into a reel. And that makes me human. That makes me relatable. Another example of this is taking your past experiences and showing why you know how to do what you teach so well. An example of that was I did a video on why I stand in the majority of my videos, except for this clip right here. And that is because it gives me energy. And I showed old videos of me when I was a news anchor and pregnant, even standing at the news desk because I found I had more energy when I stood up. Now for video secret number five, and that is going to require keys. Come on, let's go. The fifth secret is looking at video like it's a gift. Understanding that it's not just a gift from you to your ideal person, it's a gift to yourself. I know this can sound cheesy, but this is how you're going to be able to get through all five phases of video creation and not only become successful because of your video, but really get to know who you are and what you're all about. I talked about this in this video right here, about how I didn't even know who the real me was when I started this journey of video coaching. And I realized that I had abandoned the real me, the person I was before I got over sensitive and I overthought what people were thinking of me. I abandoned that person when my father got sick when I was 13 years old. And then I started to really just follow my curiosity. I didn't know where this video coaching business was going to take me. I just knew that I had a gift, I had experience, and I really liked to do it. And it was still scary for me, being in television for all those years, still scary for me to put myself out there on social media. But I wouldn't give up because I kept being rewarded for doing the hard thing, for putting myself out there 
And even if I made mistakes, looking at what I did, learning from it, and then getting back up and doing it again. And before I knew it, I had built a community online. Now, I have a community who's going to come here. This is the Video School Playhouse where I'm going to host workshops for people who are members of my course, This Video School. I never intended for this to happen, but again, I kept following my curiosity and I had this old barn in the back of my house and my husband said, why don't we renovate it and use it as a space? So here it is. We're gonna have events here, trainings, workshops. It's going to be fun. Plus I can use it to create videos and have different sets in here. When you put yourself out there, you start to really learn what you're good at. You learn about your personality. You dig back into your past and you look for stories that can relate to your ideal person, which also is really healing for you. I found that when I did that, I could see where I had overcome obstacles and struggles over the years that I had forgotten about. I realized I'm a pretty strong person and I can help other people who are where I was by sharing my story and you can do the same thing. And long story short, by me going back to that person I was when I was 13, pulling out the goofy characters that I had put away because I didn't want people to think I was too weird. I started to really take ownership of who I was, the good, the bad, and the weird. And when I went back to see my father, who I haven't seen in two years, a couple weeks ago, I realized what video had done for me. I had not only found my real self, I was able to heal my hurt self. I was able to forgive him for things that he had done. And even though he's really sick right now, we had the best time we've had since I was a kid. And I, I know that's because I followed my curiosity. I put faith in God to just, hey, I feel this pull. Take me where you want me to go and let's do this and not give up, even if it gets embarrassing. And I've shared stories, this video right here, of doing some really embarrassing things with my video. But instead of giving up, I learned from my mistakes and I kept going. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to know that this can be really fun for you. And it's more than just making money. It's about you rediscovering who you really are and taking ownership of that unique person that God designed you to be. It gets me like this because when I started this and I got to phase five, go watch that video if, if you don't know what all the phases are, I realized why I love video so much. And that's because not only is it a creative outlet, but it's also a pathway for people to find the real them. And I want that for you. Drop a comment below and tell me which of the five secrets you're going to use first. And if you haven't watched that video about finding the real you, check it out right here and I'll see you next time.